Good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning. We're getting loaded. We're getting out of here. I'm in Calgary, Alberta. It's been quite the trip. We started in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We went all the way down to Tonopah. That's how you pronounce it. Now that I've read all of your comments, I released all my videos yesterday. Everyone's telling me I was, I was pronouncing uh, Tonopah wrong. It's Tonopah, Arizona. So Winnipeg to Tonopah, Arizona. From there, we went up to Grand Junction, Colorado to grab a load that brought us up to Banff. Dropped that off in the mountains there. Came back here to Calgary, waited till Monday today to grab this load that's taking me over to Brandon, Manitoba, back towards home. So I'm here and ready to go. Um, 20 minutes early. So as soon as they're uh, available and ready to start throwing stuff on my trailer, they're gonna start, I'm gonna tie it down. And we're just on a hot load this thing's this load has got to be in Brandon 1200 kilometers away 723 miles away tomorrow morning now in Canada here I can drive 13 hours in one day at 100 kilometers an hour in 13 hours that should be possible or 60 miles an hour for 12 hours or 13 hours, that's what I have, my full day. We should be able to make it if nothing goes wrong. <laughs> it's going to be tight. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna book it as soon as we're done here. And uh, it shouldn't be a problem really. It'll, it'll be a bit rushed, but we'll get it done. It'll be empty tomorrow morning and uh, probably go home. I might work the rest of the week yet, but I wanna go home for tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening and night. And uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so I've got a load of these steel coils. They're on pallets, so I don't have to worry about them rolling away, which is nice, but I did have to tarp them. So there's one, two, three, four, five rolls underneath there. Starting here, one, two, three, four, five. 45,000 pounds altogether. That's a full load, but I was able to just use one tarp to cover them, so that worked out in my favor. I think that turned out pretty good. Take a look at this side real quick. So because it's kind of like a triangle, right, I had to secure my tarps here so that they wouldn't flap. Bungees around there. A bungee holding those two together so that there's not too much pressure on those hooks there. I don't want to rip them out because I got these things stretched pretty tight. I think that turned out as, about as well as I could get it to. It's covered. It's going to be a rushed load now. I've got to get out there. Ah, I've only got time for my one break I should still be able to get my walk in today get some exercise but that's it that and uh, I already, I'm full of fuel so I don't think I'll have to fuel on the way I'll fuel after I deliver other than that it's just uh, it's time to go let the trip begin so this is the highway between Calgary and Airdrie they're only a couple of miles apart. We're going to go around Calgary on the west, sorry, east side. And then get on to Trans Canada Highway 1, and that highway will take us all the way back to Manitoba, to Brandon, where I should be able to make it with pretty good time. I'm looking at my GPS and my mileage, the weather outside, the forecast for the road ahead. I should have no problem getting there on time. I should have plenty of extra time, actually. I won't be able to stop for like excessively long breaks or anything, but I got time to stop for bathroom breaks and for a walk, stretch my legs a little bit. So that's that's all I really need. As long as I uh, don't get carried away, <laughs> which I won't, I'll get uh, I'll get there with plenty of time to spare. That's good. We can sit back, relax, and enjoy the drive across the prairies. So between Calgary and Strathmore, Alberta. Range Road 270 and then Karen. make a U-turn if possible in 650 feet. Between Calgary and Strathmore, Alberta, there's this SO truck stop, which is new. Oh, and it's already being filled up with somebody's drop trailers. 
But what are you doing? Come on. Oh, if you would have had your signal on earlier. So I remember when this place was built and I was uh, really excited. Hey, we got all this new parking right outside of Calgary, right? Somebody's already using it as their drop yard. That's unfortunate. A whole bunch of garbage off here to the right. This is disappointing. This place is brand new. I was hoping it wouldn't deteriorate like this. Guys, it's just soft back here too. quite a bit of parking here but uh, you know how it happens once they start allowing people to use it as a drop yard it usually fills up pretty quickly the whole place so that's disappointing but there's still lots of parking here now during the day anyway they have a Burger King inside a KFC inside and a convenience store I'm kind of hoping they had a Tim Hortons very often when you see an Esso truck stop like this there's usually a Tim Hortons right right inside or right nearby in the same lot but no I think I think Burger King sells coffee, and I'm sure the convenience store does. I'm just going to check on my load here, and then uh, go inside, grab a coffee, and we'll head on down the road. Well, it's still there. That's good. they will come. Maybe that's why they're renting out their yard for those drop trailers. Aren't attracting enough business yet or something. The store is pretty nice inside. Oh, turn right on. Range Road 271. Turn right in 730 feet. I thought it was Here in Red Cliff, Alberta. Anybody looking for a boat? That looks fun. So we don't have too much extra time on this trip, but I do have enough time for a walk. I have about like two and a half hours available that I could use for breaks today on the way there. So an hour of that, I figured, get my exercise in, get my walk in. And I still have about another hour. That's just for like 
bathroom breaks and coffee stops. I still have 10 hours of driving to do today yet. Close to it anyways. Actually, I'm, I'm thinking about going to Winnipeg. No, we're going to Brandon. So we got about eight hours, give or take. We'll get there tonight, plenty of time. We'll go to bed and we'll be on time for our appointment tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. That'll be in central time, so we are losing an hour going that way. But exercise is important to me. We're trying to make it, make it a habit. This is Red Deer, Alberta, just down the hill over there. Up on the other side, that's Medicine Hat, Alberta. Or is this Medicine Hat already? No, this probably. That's right, I think Red Cliff is behind me, I think. I think we're already in Medicine Hat. Two small cities side by side. I didn't even see this pathway on the map. I love it when these towns have these nice walkways. Of course, here you got the little bit of history of the area. First World War Monument. You can pause and read that if you want. Hopefully it picks it up on the screen. Not, I apologize. It's another one. If you're watching in HD, you can always pause and zoom in on the screen too, like you would a map. And these are the same thing, just in French. And that's the Trans Canada right there, eastbound. That's the road we'll be going down when we leave. I'm just about halfway done already. I would stop and read those signs usually, but I'll have to read them later when I'm editing because I don't have any time right now. There goes a speeding ticket on wheels. I used to have a little bit of a crotch rocket. It was only a 500. It was a 2013 Honda CBR 500R. I bought it brand new. I sold it and traded it for a, a 2008 a Yamaha V-Star 650. Uh, so I like the Cruiser a little better. It's just a little 650, but that's something. The 500 that I had, it was like a crotch rocket, but it sounded like a lawnmower. <laughs> I think it was what, only two cylinder or something? It was pretty quick, but I mean, not quick enough to get me into trouble. These big bikes, I always wanted to have like a Yamaha R1 or something, or 1000cc or CBR 1000. I'm glad I never got one of those. I would have gotten into so much trouble. Knowing me, like my younger self, all I can do is hope and pray that I can teach my son to not make the same mistakes I made. But you know what? That's the way we all learn, right? My parents did their best to teach me all life's lessons. They did a really good job too. A really good job. I had a great childhood. But you know what? I still had to go out there and learn all on my own, make all my own mistakes. Because younger me thought that he knew better, right? Oh, well, mom and dad just don't understand. Times are different nowadays. No, they're wrong. You know, it was about when I turned 23 to 26 in there. Suddenly it clicked. I was like, huh. So, mom and dad were right the whole time. But I had to learn on my own. So I'm hoping and I pray that I'll have the patience and wisdom and understanding to allow my son Theo to learn himself as well. It's got to be frustrating to watch your kids make the same mistakes you did, knowing full well that you told them what would happen, but they did it anyways. And when you watch them fall, you don't want to tell them, I told you so. Like my parents never did that. They never judged me, they never got upset at me, they never said, see, I told you. Nope. When I did fall down, they were just there to pick me up, mm -hmm. dust me off and say, we're here for you, try again. Hope I can be a parent like that. Theo, if you're watching this, 
please don't make the same mistakes I did. Make your own mistakes, man. <sighs> Slow down. But I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna have to figure out how to how to deal with it. When you see your kid making a mistake that you know, you know where it's gonna end up. You know where it's gonna end up. And you know, you just gotta let them learn on their own. Unless if it's like a huge, like life altering mistake, okay? Then you gotta step in and be like, okay, no, this isn't happening, okay? This, this will change your life. This will alter your entire, no, too far, too far. Other things, yeah. Bad if you make a mistake, and I'll be there. I'll do my best not to judge, not to tell him I told you so. Just to be there. Smile on my face, pat him on the back, say, well, that, that didn't work out the way you thought it would, did it? <laughs> try again, try it a different way. Or maybe just don't do that again, depending on what happened, right? I'll always be there. All right, we made it to the bottom of the hill. Here's a nice neighborhood in Medicine Hat. From all the way up there. You know what that means? The whole way back is gonna be uphill. <laughs> yes. All right, let's get going. No more stops today. Only if I have to. to throw my garbage out. Oh man. I had it all ready to go there and everything. Ah, it's too late. I'm not gonna back up past that cop there. That looks weird and suspicious. This way and then go around, get back on Trans Canada, and then hammer down rest of the day. Feel good, I got my walk in. Went 3.02 miles. Careful, careful. Make sure a construction guy doesn't suddenly pop out in front of me. You never know. I can't believe I forgot to throw out my garbage. Oh man. I guess you're coming with me to Manitoba. Okay, after those two vehicles there, it looks like we're all clear to taxi onto the runway for takeoff. Lift off. Let's go. So those buildings there off to the left, those are the ones we went past there when I was talking to you. working on this bridge that we're about to go over here. They, they had to build a new one for whatever reason. Or maybe they're making it into a four lane, it used to be a two lane going across here. Anyway, they had to build this side. It took them like eight years, didn't it? This was under construction for so long. That's what I think of when I come through Medicine Hat now. Oh yeah, that's the place that takes like a decade to build the bridge. <laughs> uh, sorry guys, all you locals watching. I can't help what I get reminded of when I drive through a town.
pretty wet out here. I'm glad I stopped to do my walk earlier in Medicine Hat. We're coming up to, oh, we're about 45 minutes from Moose Jaw. So we're like a third of the way through Saskatchewan, headed east from the Alberta border. The day's been great. I mean, the truck's been running good. We're getting pretty decent fuel economy. We're just slipping through the wind.
friend in Manitoba. We made it. Half an hour left yet. Probably go park at the customer. Might do that. I'm gonna pull into uh, Husky here first, see if I can find a parking spot or not. In 600 feet, turn right on Highland Avenue and then approaching destination on the right side in 160 feet. It's pretty full here. This place never used to be so full. I might have to go park at the customer. I think we'll be okay here. I'm gonna go back and check on everything. Oof, man, it's been windy tonight. Still there, that's good. Nicely sealed, it'll be nice and dry underneath there. I'm gonna have to fix that flag. That bottom piece isn't connected anymore. But yeah, everything else seemed uh, pretty full. I could have parked, I guess, right along the edge of the driveway, right there. That would have been a spot I could have made. I would have been out of the way. Everything over there. It's all taken up. So. That works just, just perfect. Look at that thing just flapping away up there. Hope it doesn't fly away. Thanks. See that bottom piece isn't connected there anymore? It's probably an expensive flag. Everything's expensive. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, time to go to bed. It's gonna be an early morning tomorrow. <laughs>